my name is Ante Brembakka, and I'd like to share with you a short example of how to systematically identify habitual acts of physical violence, how to systematize defensive themes, and how to compress them into a specific two-person drill. Finally, by doing it on your own, while visualizing the applications, you'll have created your own kata. As the theme for this short instructional video, I've chosen releases and defenses against different grabs, starting from the wrist, then up the arm, to the shoulder. Let's start by looking at different ways to deal with wrist grabs. First of all, your hand is weak when it's far away from your body, and strong when it's close to yourself. If you go to the outside of the opponent's grip, you will realize that the wrist is the weakest link. You can also easily break away from the grip if you go to the inside and against the thumb. If the opponent grabs with both hands, you can use your other hand to support your own movement. You can also make your releases more effective by slapping or striking the arms of the opponent. There are lots of possibilities and variations of different wrist grabs. So next we'll squeeze all these important principles into four specific techniques. The first one is a defense against a cross wrist grab from the top. I go to the outside of the opponent's wrist and support my movement with my other hand. We can easily see that this is a movement we can find in Seyunchin or Nipaipo Nepai Kata. The second technique is a defense against a double wrist grab. This time I go to the inside of the grip against the thumb. I also use my free hand to strike down on the opponent's arm to make the release more efficient. This move we can find in Kururunfa and Shisochin, but with some variation also in many other kata. The third technique is a defense against the same side wrist grab from underneath. I go to the outside of the opponent's grip so I can press down with my elbow against his center line. From there, it's easy to follow up with strikes. This move can be found in different versions of Seisan and Seyunchi. Technique number four is again a defense against the same side wrist grab from underneath, but this time I go to the inside of the grip against the thumb for the release. Once I get behind the back, I can use my knuckles to strike, or as an alternative I could grab and push the opponent against the wall. This move we can see in Suparimpei and Gekisai Daiichi. But if we open the hands and do it as a Mawashiuke, it can be found in many kata. Next, let's look at the options when grabbed by the arm. First we have the option of going to the inside of the grip. If you squeeze really hard with your bicep, you might be able to get the opponent into a very painful thumb joint lock. If you go to the outside of the grip, the opponent's wrist can either become extended or flexed. If you add a twist to it, it will become painful enough to create an opening for you to strike. The following two techniques will be enough to summarize what we need to know in order to defend against arm grabs. In the first one, the opponent grabs both my arms I choose to go to the inside of the grip and I follow up with a double strike. This move we can see in different versions of Pasai or Basai Dai, but also in the more exotic Shimpa. In the next technique, I grabbed only by one arm so I can turn a little bit sideways, apply joint lock and strike to the jaw or to the neck. We see that it looks just like a joranuke that we can find in the kihon of most karate styles. Many kata has this technique, for example gekisai, niseishi, jin and jitte. 
the last habitual acts of physical violence we'll have a look at in this short presentation are different versions of shoulder grabs from the front or the, from the side. We have the option of either striking the arm that is grabbing you or then circle around to entangle it. It doesn't really matter if you grab by both shoulders or just one. Same principles can still be used. So in this technique, I strike or press down on the arm and then strike from underneath against the chin and finally to the neck. This move can be found in at least Seisan, Hakutsuru and Saifa. When grabbed by both shoulders, I choose to entangle the arms to gain control. For from here it's easy to follow up, for example with a headbutt. This is not a very common kata move, but something similar can be found in at least Haporen and Hakufa. In the next step we'll put these eight handpick techniques after each other into a two-person flow drill. This drill contains the most important techniques and principles that you need to know in order to deal with different grabs against your wrist, arm or shoulder. Finally, we'll remove the attacker and put the solo components into a geometrical configuration. What do we get? A kata. By making this video, I didn't want to discredit the old masters. They were the best of their time and I highly respect and appreciate what they have done for the art of Karate. Many of them, I'm sure, lived closer to violence and real fighting than most of today's top Karate. Their mental toughness and fighting spirit were probably extraordinary and they have passed down many valuable lessons that transcend the physical aspect of martial arts. However, this doesn't mean they knew everything, nor that they were technically very skilled. I believe traditional kata were collections of a certain master's own favorite techniques and fighting principles, and therefore should be preserved as a link to the past. The problem from a practical point of view is that we don't know for sure what the moves represent. In this video, I just wanted to show an example of how a kata can be created to cover the most important techniques and principles, in this case for dealing with different grabs, but also how we can do it systematically and pedagogically with all the information and knowledge we have today. As a firm believer in muscular balance, I also think it's important to practice techniques on both sides. Creating new kata gives us the possibility to make them symmetrical. I think that new kata created like this have the same holistic value together with the same physiological and psychological benefits as the old kata. If we stay true to the tradition and perform them in a similar manner as in traditional kata, they will also help us with bunkai in general. However, the main advantage of new kata that we create is that we know what the moves mean. This makes the visualization of the actual applications so much easier and the kata can work as a decent substitute when a training partner is not available. In conclusion, I think people should do what they enjoy. For some, it's trying to find out the meaning of old kata. For me, it's training and teaching in a way that can make sure that the flame of traditional karate stays alive.